welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and uh, thank you if you were watching our stream yesterday or have seen the video of that this morning. Um, and thank you if you were watching that and you've caught up with my gas video as well. Actually, ooh yeah, I'll get back to that in a moment. Um, so the stream's about the return of the Obra Dinn, which is a fairly um, surprisingly gruesome investigation of some 60 odd deaths on a ship 200 years ago. Um, very strange game and we're sort of muddling through it as best we can. Um, I do sense that there's a way you could get to the end in it, but it's a very puzzling game. We met some very odd beasts last night. Um, really interesting stuff actually, um, but not for, the, not for the young or the faint-hearted perhaps. So um, that's going on there. On Patreon we released the Paint by Numbers Institute document, so that is up there um, for two dollar and above patrons it's the november monthly reward there'll be a prize awarded on the 20th for a, a correct solution to the final um well we need the final password of the hunt is the correct solution and uh, do email that to us if you get that far it takes a while um so and we did get one in at least overnight fantastic effort to get through that um, so that's on Patreon. There's also Simon Solve of Zeta Maths, Two Truths and a Lie there. Um, that's interesting too. Loads of stuff going on. Loads on Discord. Um, oh, it's just, I mean, there's a lot of puzzles. Simon's Puzzle Today features a discovery. And I mean, we can, as Simon sees it, a discovery. We can, we can leave him to his discoveries. I think this grid is amazing. And we'll look at that in a moment. I did mention yesterday's gas where I struggled, I would say manfully, but like a fool with this puzzle. Um, Crop Key Pairs by Sam. And just in case you watched that and you ended up wondering what was he missing, what I was missing, I knew that these sets, there are, there are three of these sets of dots in the puzzle. And I knew that on the black dot, it either had to run 124 or 248 in one direction or another. So these central digits all had to be 2 or 4. What I did not appreciate was that if they were 2, there'd be a 1 on one of these black dots, but they would also need a 1 on one of these white dots. And had I known that, I could have instantly labelled those oops, as 4s and got a decent start on the puzzle, which I did not do. I never tumbled to that realisation in 30 minutes of slogging through it. I was quite amused by the comment saying, Mark should realise that uh, a long inference chain wouldn't be necessary in a gas puzzle and think harder. I was trying to think harder. I did realise that. But since I couldn't find this break in, I needed the long inference chain to get through it. So sorry, that's the way it goes sometimes. Anyway. This is a discovery, I reckon. Um, you can see why this is called a Fibonacci Thermo. If you're familiar with the Fibonacci spiral, the golden ratio, etc., etc., um, this is a very elegant spiral in the grid. And it's all we get. We get one black dot, we get this spiral, and a rule. So we've got normal Sudoku rules. But along the Thermo, um, it's two-digit numbers, so that will be a two-digit number. It might be, say, 15, like that. Then there'll be another two-digit number, which has to be bigger, then another one, then another one, all the way to the end of the thermo, increasing. Now, there is one extra rule about those. Any two-digit numbers beginning with two or eight must have an odd second digit. The black dot, that's just this one down here, joins digits with a one-to-two ratio. I'm assuming that'll disambiguate at the end or something, but uh, what a brilliant grid, what a brilliant creation. This is Samantha Mukherjee who has done a number of puzzles for the channel before, but this this may be a masterpiece. I, you know, whether it's hard or easy, just to have created this grid is fantastic. So do give it a try on the link under the video. I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. I mean, we've got nothing to go on except, obviously, the thermo. So Let's start by highlighting the tens digits, just so that we know where they are. They're alternating all around. That helps us check we've got an even number of cells. What colour is a tens digit? I don't know. It's green this time. So, 
how they, they must ascend. So if we did start with a one there, we get a two here. This could be two, that could be two, this would have to be three because it sees that one. So let's put in the minimum numbers and then work up from there. One, two, two, two still. By now we're up to three. Then four because it sees the three. Then five, no, then four, sorry. Then five because it sees the four. Five again, five again, six because it sees the five. This is good. Six, no, seven, it's in the same box as the six. Eight, oh, is this chain going to be long enough? Is this thermo going to be long enough? Yes, we can do eight there, nine and nine. And that must be right. I mean, I should have done those big because, uh, well, okay, hang on. It, it's not necessarily all right, actually, because this one didn't have to stay down at two. That could have been a three and still allow that. So let's just pick this up. So one, two, they must be right because they see each other. Any of these two which see each other, they're fixed. So let's put them in first. Four, five, five, six, seven, eight. They all see each other in a sequence. Then eight sees nine, right. So now we know that's nine. We know that's eight. Uh, we can put in the five here, in between the fives. Now this could be two or three. No, it sees a three. So that's two. It is this one that is variable, a two or a three there. And that's a real start to the puzzle. Almost tempted to go into Sudoku here, but let, let's have a look at the... Now we've got this extra clue about twos and eights, and there are three eights and two twos. Now eights always have an odd second digit, so this one can't be nine, five, or three. So that's got to be a seven, because if it was 81, those couldn't exist as lower numbers. So that's a seven. Then this has to be odd again, so 85 or 83, and this has to be 83 or 81, and I can't determine which. Um, now, this can't be 21, 5 or 7. If it was 29, this couldn't exist, so it's 23 there. This has to be, it can't be a 5, so that is a 7 or a 9. Now this could be 29. If that's a 7, then 2, 9 there is possible. I'm just going to corner mark those to remember that. But if it's not exactly like that, then this is a 3 and this is 30-something. But let's see how far we can go with some Sudoku now, because we've got quite a bit done. So 1 has to be in one of those two cells. It's 1, 4, 3, 1... In fact, these are two and six, and that's a one five pair, and that resolves this is a three. Um, that result, I'm trying to put a three in, and that resolves that as a one. Um, and that doesn't sort out the possibilities here. It does stop this being 31. Is the, are the 30 possibilities limited? Yes, possibly by the fact that this can't be higher than 36. So this has to be. If it's not a 9 from 29, then it's a 5, 4, or 2 to go with the 3. So it's a bit limited, not quite as helpful as I was hoping. Um, now, there's a 9 in one of those two cells. Oh, that's 7, 2, 9. I'm, OK, I'm going to take it out of the corners now because I don't want to interrupt regular Sudoku markings. There is a 7 in one of those two in this box. 5 is somewhere there. Hmm, maybe I haven't got quite enough across the middle again. 7, 2, 6, 1, 3 and 5. That is 8 or 9. I don't know. This isn't all that helpful. Right, let's have a look at these 50-somethings. This can't be a 2, 3, a 4, or a 5. If it was 56, yeah, it could be 56. So it's either 51 or 56. Could even be 57. 
then this is higher. But this all, this now can't be a 1 because that's lower. 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 are gone. So this is either 7 or 8. And this has to be higher and can't be 8. So that's a definite 9, which is a surprise. Um, the only other increasing numbers are these 40s. Or is there... If that was 32, this would be a 2. Is that a problem? No, I don't think so. Right, so... Ah, oh, what about the Kropke dot? Yes, you can't have a 5 on a Kropke dot. Muppet. So that's 95. Ah, so this is a 1, 2, 3 or 4. Now what is on the Kropke dot? Not an 8. So it's either 3, 6, 2, 4 or 2, 1. No, it's... Oh no, it doesn't definitely have a 3 in it because that could be 93. Okay, we don't really know. But they're from 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6. So 5 is up here somewhere. That's not helpful. Right, 9, 5, 2, 3. So that 4 appears there somewhere. 8. One of those is an 8. 4 in this box. Not very useful. 3 is in one of those two positions. 8, I don't know about. 5 is in one of those two. Pencil mark it. There we go. Um, now I'm just missing one thing here. Come on. Can, that can't be a 3 because I've now put a 3 there. There we go. I think the line colour was obstructing me a bit. So this is 29 following 27. So that can't be a 7 or a 9. We can place 7 and 9. There we go. Um, 8 is there. Well, these are from... That is a naked single 1. 4 or 5 there. These are from 4, 8 and 4, 5, 8. 7, 2, 9, 8, 1. So 5 is in one of these two cells in box 2 and can't be there. So this is a 5 and that fixes this row. Get a 4 there. Now there's no 4 on this crop key dot or in that cell. 4, 7, 8, 9. Mm, not that helpful. 2, 5 and 6 up here. No, that doesn't resolve it. 7, 3, 1, 5, 9. Oh, that can't be a 5. So it's part of a 2, 6 pair. So this is a 4, 8 pair. These are from 2, 7 and 6. Now look, this can't be a 7 because this can't be 8 or 9 and it's a higher 40 number. So that is 2 or 6 and this is where the 7 goes in the column. This now can't be 7, 8 or 9. So this can't be 6. That's a lovely bounce back. Nice tigger work there. So this is higher than 42. It's 3 or a 6 to make 43 or 46. This can't be a 7 anymore. 56 or 51 with 57 or 58 there. I can't resolve those. 7, 4, 9, 5. So I've got a 1 in one of those positions. Oh, 8 in this row, in row 8, must be there. That gives us an 8 here. Um, that puts 8 definitely in one of those two cells. How is this middle row going? No real change. That one's 4 or 9. Oh, that said 7 or 8, and it's clearly 7 now. Oh, that's 4, actually. Right. Middle row, very helpful, if I would just look at it. Um, so, a 1, 6 pair has to go in those cells. 8, one well, for looking at the column. 7 must be there. 2, 9 and 3. That can't be a 9. That can't be a 9. So 9 is there. 69 on the line. That doesn't really um, attract anything. 1 can't be here. These are from 3, 5 and 6. But the line again doesn't affect that. Right, looking down column 1. No, column 3. Not really. Come on, something give me some help. That can't be a 5 because of the 5 pair there. So in fact, 
five's fixed there, which doesn't get much else done. Um, anything on the line? Yes, 42, no, 43 or 46. So that's this. No, I think the line, as we've used it as far as we can, the rest is really just Sudoku. So we've got a one in one of those positions. 7, 2, 9, 8, 1, 5. Oh, what am I missing here? There's a nine in one of those. Seven is in one of those. One, nine, seven, five, four. Eight is in one of those with the one. So that's a pair that I hadn't noticed. One, five, eight, two, nine, seven. So that is four or six. These are from three, four or six. Seven is again in one of those. It's a sort of X wing in columns five and six. One six pair, one five pair. No, I don't see how to use that. Six, nine, five, seven, eight. Is it this Kropke dot? Can it be three, six? Then it would form a three, six pair there. We'd have one and two there. Looks like it can be three, six. Can it be one, two? Then that's a three, that's a six which also gives us a six there. I don't see the problem with that either. Nine, one, eight, two. So one of these is a three. Oh, what am I missing here? So let's just figure this one out. Something, something's got to give here. One thing has got to give and then we're home. Um, a one, five pair, I'm missing something. Two, two in this column, right, it's got to be here. Yes, that is helpful. Then that becomes a two. Now, oh, this couldn't have a two on it because of that two. There we go. So it's a three, six pair. Yes, that is going to help. Two, six, one there. Um, this has become a one in its row. That fixes one at the top of the grid. This can't be a six. We've got two, three, and four still to place in, oh, that's a four, that's naked now, right. So that becomes a four. That's a two, three pair, which is actually resolved. If I would look down the grid, three, four pair here, nine, six pair here, one, nine, four, three, five, and six to go in here, which looks a bit like those possibilities. Still haven't finished that Kropke dot, but surely we're now 42, yeah, no, 18542. So we've got 9, 7, 3, and 6 to put in. 7's in one of those, 9's in one of those. Oh, this is so close now. Oh, 4 there is now looking at that. There we go. 6, 1, 6. 1 and 5 are resolved. Now we've got 7 and 4 here. They can go in. This is now a 3-5 pair. That must help. That's become a 3, so this is a 5-6 pair at the top. Um, one, nine, seven, eight. That is 3 or 6. So somebody's, that's a 3-6 pair. So this is now a 7-9 pair. And we know that's not a 7. So there we go. 9 and 7. Six and nine, three and six, three and six. That fixes three and five, six and five. And this puzzle is going to work and is, as I suspected, absolutely beautiful. Not very hot, not rock hard anyway. Just need a little bit of uh, confidence and sense about attacking the, the Fibonacci thermo spiral. That is really clever, Samantha. Love it. Thank you. I mean, it, that ranks as a discovery to me, for sure. That's really impressive grid construction, and it works. Love it. So thank you very much, Samantha, for sending that. Thank you for following along with me. Uh, very much hope to see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.